more than conquerors uh, through him, right? So as I begin to think about this, we climbed a, a, a rock in, in Washington uh, on the Washington side of the Hood River called Beacon Rock, Kara and I. And, and you climb this rock and you just keep kind of going up and up and up. And when you get to the top, you can look over the Columbia River and you can look at all the cool things that are happening. And when you get up there, you're supposed to raise your hands and go, I conquered it. Yeah, I was very tired. I don't think I could raise that, my hands at that moment. It was pretty exhausting. When I was beginning to research this series, I looked for pictures of conquerors, and you won't believe who came up. Arnold Schwarzenegger. A picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was Mr. Universe. Unfortunately, his weightlifting abilities also made him look wear um, not a very appropriate attire for his weightlifting abilities. So I couldn't show any of those pictures. So um, he was called a conqueror. He conquered all the weightlifting people in the universe. See, the Bible talks to us in Romans 8.37 that know in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him who loves us. No matter what you're going through, no matter what circumstances, we are more than conquerors. This morning what I'm dealing with is that you can conquer disappointment. Ever, anybody in this house ever been disappointed? Dealt with disappointment, someone disappointed, somebody messed with your mind, someone told you something and disappointed you. My kids never have gone through that. Because I'm perfect. So we're going to look into a story in Job. And, and I, I want you to really get into this because I really get a kick out of this. I practiced this yesterday in the sanctuary. I want you to hear this story and hear it. you got to hear it at full-fledged, just this two, two verses. And here's what it says in verse 9 of Job 2. It says, His wife said to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. Nice wife. Verse 10 says, he replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. He, I love this. He looks at his wife. What is wrong with you, woman? Are you crazy? He didn't really say that, but I'm sure he was thinking it. Are you mad? Should we accept only what is good from God and not the bad? Because we have this idea as soon as we become Christians, everything is going to be great. Nobody's going to be, everything's going to be perfect. Anybody with me? Because we all got those goosebump feelings as we receive Christ and we go, woohoo, it's going to be great. And then all of a sudden, something happens. Someone disappoints us. Maybe a pastor disappoints you. Maybe a, another church member disappoints you. Maybe your holier-than-thou parents disappointed you. Can I tell you that disappointment is really part of life. It can make you grow stronger. But how should we react when disappointment comes crashing into your life? See, we look at Job's experience and we see how we should react, how we, we should look at this idea of how we should react to this disappointment. It's in Job 2.10 where it says this, Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Should we only accept what is good and not the trouble? Literally, what Job is saying here, things are going to happen and things are going to disappoint us. Should we only look at what's good? Because what people are looking at is only when things are going really good is that's the only time then God is good. But remember, we yell out, God is good all the time. God is good. Either we believe it or we don't. I believe God is good. But then we look at the very, very fact that what Job's wife said, when things get bad, she says, you should just curse God and die. She didn't have much faith, did she? 
Even, even Job's friend says, what have you done towards God? What did you do? Maybe you should go ahead and kill yourself. Pretty much. Here's the very deal that's going on here. I see this picture. Job literally lost everything. So he's sitting under a tree. This is the picture with his friends. He's sitting underneath a tree. He's scraping the sores. Feels good, right? Because it's, you know, itchy. Itchy. And, and his friends show up. Hey, bro, what's going on? What is wrong with you? Oh, we got to take a time out minute, minute because I forgot something. We are refiguring Children's Church right now. For those that usually go to Children's Church, you don't get left out. Each one of you guys, right now it's Darren and Emlyn. You don't have to really listen to me this morning. You get a tabletop activity sheet, crayons, and a snack. But you've got to sit here and listen to me scream at the, everyone else. All right. That's Children's Church till we re reconfigure. But tell me, I'll tell you there's something on the way. All right. So here's, here's Job with his three friends. And he's scratching at his sores. You can't have them, Don. Man. You're too old. Anyways, he says, Job's wife in 2 9 says, Curse God and die. See, sometimes in circumstances, we say, Well, things are not going well, so we might as well jump ship, right? Things are bad, so God must not be for us. He must be against us. That's not the truth, because God is always there with us. No matter what's going on, no matter what disappointment is happening, God is there with us. When you lose it, when you feel disappointed, when you feel God has left you, he's right there with you. As I was thinking through this, and I kept on researching, and, and, and I read an article, and they brought up two ideas. And I, and I wish I could tell you where I found this out. I don't have a, I didn't write down the place, but it's not mine. But they gave two options before us. Number one, the clay response and the wax response. It says in Job 2.9, in the King James, it says, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. I love that curse God and die is straight across the, 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 the line. See, the clay response is this. If it doesn't go my way, I'm going to fall apart. I'm going to crack and fall apart. And in fact, because it, I'm so disappointed, someone disappointed me, it's going to stir up an offense with me. And I'm going to hold that offense. I'm going to blame somebody else for what's going on in my life. There's a book called The Bait of Satan, State, Satan that actually talks about that, which is the thorn, the offense. The clay response says, man... Someone disappointed me. I'm going to hold this against them. And everything that goes wrong from here on out is their fault. In fact, you know what? I'm going to blame God. Because whatever's happening in my life, my life is shattered like a clay pot. Anybody ever been there? How'd you fix it? You had to get back to the altar. You had to come back and realize that God is still on the throne. See, the fact is Job's wife says this one thing. You hold on to your integrity. Do you still have your integrity? Yeah. And if, then she goes, why don't you just curse God and die? I think that was a flippant statement. Just go curse God and die. You still have your integrity. Just go curse God and die. And you know in the midst of this, Job did not do that. He held on to it. The other response is the wax response. 
is, is this first person that, that, that has to simply refuse to be overcome by things. Wax. What happens with wax? Everything just slides. Right? Slip and slide. I remember as a child, uh, no kids ever did this. And if you're a little kid now, don't try this at home. Bath time was my favorite time. As the water drained from the tub, I used to soap up the bottom of the tub and, and, and I would whoosh to one side. Whoosh. It was awesome. And, and when you get to the top of the ledge, you pray that you don't fall out. Because it would look really bad being unclothed in the middle of the bathroom explaining to your mom why you slipped out of the bathtub. It was so much fun, I would do that for another 15 minutes after my bathtub time. But see, that's like our wax response. Sometimes things we accept that disappointment is going to happen and, and we need to realize how we react to it. Either we're going to have a clay response and just fall apart and blame everybody else for it. Or we're going to accept it that, yes, bad things begin to happen. We're going to come to the altar and say, God, help me through this. Yes, I'm disappointed. Yes, someone hurt me. Yes, I'm going to make it through. God, you are my strength. Amen. Amen. Job 19, 25 and 26 says this. It says, for I know that my Redeemer lives, liveth, this is King James for all you, you happy folks here, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Amen. See, he says this, he says, no matter what happens here on earth, I will soon die, but my body will praise God. The end result is my, my end result will ultimately praise God. See, here's the deal. Are you living for where you're at? Or are you living for the end result is God? See, disappointment will come. We live in an earth, in a world that disappointment happens all the time. Right? Things don't happen every time that you want them to happen, right? People disappoint us. Things disappoint us. Things sometimes don't go the way it happens. Amen? How we react can be like little Timmy in the bathtub. Let it slide. Let it glide. You'll get through it. Have faith in Christ. Number two, some great examples. What do you do if you have lemons? You make lemonade, right? You look, look at the bright side of the, what's going on. You know, you know, there was a great example in the Bible of someone who made lemonade. His name was David. He says this in Psalms 34, 1. Look at this passage of scripture. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. Amen. You know, come on. Bless the Lord at all times. How many of you know sometimes that's pretty difficult to do? To bless the Lord at all times? Man, I'm so excited. My car broke down. I will bless the Lord at all times. I stubbed my toe. I will bless the Lord at all times. My computer broke. I will bless the Lord at all times. My checkbook is empty and has 12 cents in it. I will bless the Lord at all times. <laughs> I'm sick today with the flu. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. When we begin to turn it around, and we begin to look at the situation, the praise will give us, give us strength That's to right. get through the disappointment. That's right. Amen. That's right. Because disappointment, and I'm not... Just circling it, disappointments will happen. Yeah. And how we react to it will really help us through. Yes. When I used to get disappointed in my parents, I used to make this statement. Maybe you guys have never done it because you never get disappointed or everything goes well with you. 
I used to go, Mom and Dad, nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I might as well sit in the garden eating worms. Come on, nobody ever eats worms. You might sit in the garden. is because you're just having a whining session. Right? The very fact is sometimes we get disappointed and we get into a whining session. And we say, okay, we'll get through it. My very challenge for you this morning is when life gives you lemons, make some lemonade. The secret that frees us. The secret that really frees us is number three is, is, is our faith in Christ. Yeah. It's not really much of a secret. The Lord is our strength, and he gives us strength to get through. But we know the story of Job. If you read the whole book of Job, Job went through a whole lot of stuff, but in the very end, because he kept his faith, even though he, he went through being, his wife saying, curse God and die, his three best friends say, you know, you must, might as well just, just die. He lasted it through. And he got blessed. Why do we, so many people give up when things get bad? See, there are many Christians when things get really bad, they, they go for the door instead of going for the cross. We rerun for the border instead of run for the cross. And, and that's, that's a real issue because what the world has to offer us is really no security at all. Right. What the cross offers us is eternal life. God never promised when you became a Christian that everything was going to be hunky-dory. In fact, he promised you that there's going to be trials and tribulations. The Bible says it. Are you feeling good yet? But the very fact is we have a promised land. It's called heaven, and we should be ready for it. And the very fact is that we're almost there. But the world, what they keep on selling us, is a false bag of goods. I don't know what, you're, what disappoints you the most. Is people or yourself? I find myself, it's not so much people, it's me. Because I find myself <coughs> disappointing myself, not living up to the standards or the level of faith that I need to have and the walking in it. Yes, people disappoint me. But I love it. One, one friend of mine says, well, they, they disappoint me, so they need to give me an apology. Um, okay, what if they never know that they disappointed you? Maybe you got disappointed on something you thought they said or misinterpreted something they said, and all of a sudden it all full blown in your mind. So how do you react to that? How you hold an offense to that person and they don't know it? Is that a clay response or is that a wax response? This morning, I, you know, how to be more than conquerors? I'm choosing that I'm going to live life in this gigantic tub with a soap bottom and I'm just going to glide through and live life at the fullest and pray that in those disappointing moments that I will be that kind of person that forgiveness and grace and mercy plays a great part. Because yes, right. yeah. there's too many times that I'm not going, if, if I'm allowing things to be the conquer me, I'm not being a conqueror. <clears throat> I'm being destroyed. 
And the enemy comes to seek and destroy, to destroy us as Christian walks. And when we begin to understand that, that, that the devil wants to seek and destroy each one of us, we have to understand that we are more than conquerors through him who gives us strength. When we allow him to overtake us, then we lose. We have to understand, church, this morning, that God's promise is true through this whole series, and our whole verse for this series is that we are more than conquerors. Even when you feel abandoned by God, you need to remember that the feeling and the fact are not the same thing. If in the times of difficulty you feel that your prayers are not getting above the ceiling, don't worry, God can come down below the ceiling. God is not deaf. He has not abandoned us. He is not limited. He is working silently and redemptively no matter what. So when life comes crashing in, don't give up in despair. Don't become angry at God. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't let bitterness consume you. Fight these attitudes and temptations of your heart. When disappointments seem to engulf you, say with Job, for I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though my, my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. How amazing is that? Our scripture says this, the series scripture says this in Romans 8, 37. No, in all these things, we, not I, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We have the winning statement. We can do this. How you doing today? I believe that every sermon demands a response. I believe a message demands a response. If everyone bow their heads and close your eyes, please. This is between you and the Father. If you're here this morning and you're saying, well, how can I be a conqueror if I don't know him? If I don't have a relationship with him? Well, here's the opportunity. The Lord says that you can be more, more than a conqueror in Him. Who's Him? That's Jesus Christ who went to the cross for your very sins. It, it says in, in Romans that we have all sinned from, from short of the glory of God. That means that you're in the midst of sinners. But then later in that, chap, in that book, it says that we have all been saved by grace. And the very fact is that grace is what's, you know, His love, that grace has saved us. And so that, that free gift that we find back in John 3.16 and that eternal life is yours. But it takes the act of repenting, confessing your sins and saying, I need you. So this morning, before we move to the second part of the, the altar call is, is this. If you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you're ready to say, I need him. I want to accept him. If you just stand to your feet and say, that's me. Nobody's looking around. It's between you and the Father. Saying, I need to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Hallelujah. I just give you a few minutes, a few seconds to respond. The second part of the response is this, that you're here this morning and that you have been holding on to being disappointed. You're in that play response, that offense, that, that, that thing that has been detracting, that, that been deterring, that been just really causing you not to really feel like you're moving anywhere forward. You're disappointed. You're offended. 
I found the greatest place to deal with that is at the altar. I said that this message demands a response. If you're here this morning, the Lord spoke to your heart. Now it's your opportunity to respond to this message. It doesn't even have to be anything big, but the Lord has been speaking to you from the even beginning of this message when I said, you are more than conquerors and you can conquer disappointment. Something just in the title pricked your heart because you came in with some form of disappointment and you want to lay it at the altar and God is speaking to you right now so I challenge you right now to get up from your seat to come to the altar and respond. Lord is speaking to you right now. Hallelujah. If you're a prayer warrior, if you would come and join those and just kind of intercede with them. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we exalt you. We respond to this message. You've been offended. You've been dealing with offense. You've been holding it in your heart. And you want to be set free and delivered from that. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. It's time to be more than a conqueror. Time to be free. Time to be delivered. Hallelujah.